This Flutter app is paginated such that I can navigate from page to page. I can move these page numbers around, go to the last page, and even go back to the first page. Let me show you how to set up pagination like this in your app. And by the way, an alternative to pagination is endless scrolling. I have a video on that that you can check out afterwards. We start off with a blank app. There's nothing in this app but a blank scaffold. And these are images that I am going to use as I explain the code. All the code that we're going to write in this tutorial is available for download on GitHub. Check out the link in the description. We'll start by creating variables that we're going to need in this app. The first will be a results list. And this is the list where we're going to put all the random words that we fetch from the API. And these words are going to be displayed on the pages in our app. The next variable is an integer which we will call current page. The value of current page will be zero by default and it is the one you're seeing highlighted in yellow in this bar. And it is also the page that shows up in this phrase. For example, this screenshot was taken when we were on page 27 out of 27, and this one was taken when we were on page three out of 27. The next variable is an integer as well, which we will call results per page, and this will determine the number of results we have per page in our app. The next variable is an integer which we will call start page. By default, we will have the start page as zero. And the start page is the first digit you're seeing in the list of numbered page buttons. For example, here our list starts from one and goes to two, three, four, and so on. In this case, one is our start page. In this case, seven is our start page. And in this case, 24 is our start page. Another thing to note is that current page starts from zero. So we are counting these current pages the way we count positions in an array. So instead of starting from one, we start from zero. The next thing is to write the code for fetching random words from the API, which are acting as results in our app. First, let's minimize this window so that we can see our code nicely. We'll start by defining the URL from which we are fetching these random words. And we will use the uri.pass method to convert this string to a URI. This link is in the description in case you want to use it in your app. And as we have specified here, we shall be getting 20 random words each time we make a request to this API. Next, we are going to have a function which will do the actual API call and we will call it fetch random words. This will return a void future. It will be asynchronous in nature and inside it will have a try catch block. Inside this try block will have a final which we will call random words response which will await the result of the get request to the API. In order to use this HTTP get method we will need to install the HTTP package inside our project. Let's quickly check it out on the pub.dev website. Here on the website, in the search bar, if we type HTTP and hit enter, these are the results we get. And this particular one is the one that we want to use. So when we click on it and go over to the installing tab, we can see that one way to get it in our project is through this command, flutter pub add HTTP. And so we'll close this browser and go to our terminal and put in the command. And the process is now complete. So let's close this terminal and go over to our pubspec.yml file. And when we scroll down to dependencies, we can see that HTTP has been added as a dependency. So back in our main that file, we will import this package at the top and we will import it as HTTP. And now in our function, we can see that we are able to use it. Let's close this explorer. The next thing is to process the results that we get from this API. And for this, we are going to use an if statement that checks if the response code is 200. And if it is, we are going to decode the JSON response that we receive. Let us change this to random words response. To decode the response that we get, we need to import that convert at the top. Back in our function, we'll have this variable JSON random words, and this will be the result of our decoding. Then we'll use our set state function to add all the words in the response to our results list. The set state function ensures our app rebuilds so that we can see the results we've just received from the API. Here we'll have an else block inside of which we'll have forward slashes. That means we won't have any code in our else block, but this is the place where you would handle an error where the response code is not 200. Maybe the server has responded with an error code or for some other reason, you're not able to get a response from the server. 
here's where you would handle that error. Either you would show an error message to your user or any other way of handling this error. We'll do the same in the catch block. We'll have forward slashes for comments, but here is where you would handle an error that occurs while trying to run this function. We are done creating the variables and the function that we need for this app. So we'll move on to the layout of the app. We'll start by adding the body property of the scaffold inside of which we will put a column and the first child will be a sized box to give us spacing at the top. Next we will create the button for fetching random words and we will put this elevated button inside a center widget. In the onPressed property we will call our fetch random words function. Then we'll add a button style to it where we'll set the background color to amber, the foreground color to black, and the shape to a rounded rectangle border. And the child of this elevated button will be a text widget that says fetch random words. After that, we'll have a sized box for spacing and move on to the cards for displaying random word results. We will use an if statement to check if our results list is not empty, at which point we will display a text widget that shows the number of results as being the length of our results list. Then we will have another if statement that checks again if our results list is not empty, at which point we use a for loop to show cards for each result. To determine how many times this for loop will run, we shall take the minimum between either the results per page or the number of results that are going to occupy the last page, just to make sure that the for loop does not run excess times when it is building the final page, when the final page does not have enough results to fill it. To be able to use this mean function, we need to import that math at the top. Then finally, we will increment the value of i by one each time the loop runs. For each result, we will have a card with a container as its child with some margin. And the child of this container will be a column with the cross axis alignment set to start. To learn more about the column, check out my column video. The children of this column will be, first of all, a text widget that shows us the number of this result in the entire list. And we are adding one to this value because we start counting positions in an array from zero instead of one. Then a sized box for spacing. Then a text widget that shows the actual random word with a text style to increase its font size. And now our layout work is complete. Let's save and build this app to see if we are fetching data from the API. And here is our app. I'll go ahead and close the inspector tab and the terminal. We do not need those for now. And when we click on fetch random words, we can see that now we get results from the API and we can keep fetching as many random words as we want. Let's now set up the actual pagination. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and send it to someone who you think will find it helpful as well. And subscribe to this channel with the notifications turned on if you haven't already so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. Let's put back our image. Then let's close this window here and move on to the pagination navigation section. We're going to put this bar inside the bottom navigation bar of our scaffold. And inside this bottom navigation bar, we're going to put a column with the main axis size set to minimum. We are setting the main axis size to minimum so that the column does not try to take up the entire page, but instead only takes up the space that it needs. The children of this column will be first a size box for spacing, then the page numbering text. We're going to use an if statement that checks if the results list is not empty, at which point we'll display the text widget. In this text widget, we'll display the page number of the current page out of the total pages in the app at the time. We are adding one to the current page because our page count starts from zero instead of one. And we are using this ceiling function just in case there are not enough results to completely fill up the last page of the app. Then we'll apply a text style to this to increase the font weight. And then we'll put in a sized box for spacing, then move on to the page navigation buttons. We're going to put these buttons inside a row whose main axis alignment will be set to center. To learn more about the row, check out my row video. This row will have several children. The first child will be the first page button. And this here is what I am referring to as the first page button. We will use a ternary or conditional operator 
first to check if we have moved away from the first page and then we'll check if the maximum number of buttons we can display depending on the horizontal space available is smaller than the number of pages we need for the app. Here we are using this floor function to make sure we do not try to squeeze in a button where there is extra space but the space is not enough for the button and as you're going to see we're going to allocate 30 pixels width for the button so we already know how much space the button is going to take and then to learn more about using the media query to get screen size check out my media query video so if these conditions are met we are going to display a sized box inside of which we are going to have the icon button which we can now press to go to the first page and if the conditions are not met we're just going to have a blank sized box by the way the reason for subtracting 120 pixels here is to leave room for the icons that are sometimes visible and sometimes not for example you can see that these two are visible here but they're not visible in this and these situations. Let's now move on to the move backward button. We're going to use the same ternary operator as we used for the first page button because the same conditions will determine whether this move backward button is visible. And if these conditions are met, we are going to display the same kind of sized box as the first page button, but the on pressed function will be different. Instead of setting the start page and the current page to zero, it will reduce the value of start page by one. And if these conditions are not met, we will display a blank sized box. This here, by the way, is the move backward button. Next, we will move to these here, which we will call the numbered page buttons. We're going to use a for loop that starts iterating from the start page value and to determine how many times this loop iterates we're going to take the minimum between the number of buttons we can show in the available space plus the value of the start page and the number of pages in the app and if these conditions are met we are going to show a sized box inside of which we will put a circle avatar let's put a comma here to get rid of the error our circle avatar will have a radius of 10 and its background color will be either amber or white depending on whether this button represents the current page. The child of this circle avatar will be an inkwell, which on tapped will call a set state function that will set the current page to the value of this button. The child of this inkwell will be a text widget which displays the number of this button, which is the value of i. We're going to add one to the value of i because i starts from zero and we are counting our pages starting from one. Let's save for format then move on to the move forward button. This here is the move forward button. To decide whether the move forward button will be visible or not, we will use a ternary operator that checks whether first of all the total number of pages in the app is greater than the number of buttons we can show in the bar and also if the total number of pages in the app minus the start page is greater than the total number of buttons we can display and if these conditions are met we're going to display a sized box inside of which we shall have an icon button whose icon will be the navigate next icon inside the on pressed property we shall have a set state function that increases the value of start page by one and if these conditions are not met we are going to display an empty sized box let's save for formatting and finally we move on to the last page button this here is the last page button. To determine whether the last page button will be visible or not, we will use the same ternary condition that we used to determine whether the move forward button will be visible or not. And if these conditions are met, we will display an icon button whose icon will be the last page icon. And in its own pressed property, we're going to have a set state function that sets the start page to the total number of pages in the app minus the number of buttons we have enough space to display and it will also set the current page to the total number of pages in the app minus one because of course the current pages start from zero and if these conditions are not met we will display a blank sized box and that's it so let's save our app for formatting then reload it to see our new app and here is our reloaded app when we click on this we fetch some random words from the api and you can see that our pagination bar now shows. If we click on 2, we can see that it takes us to page 2 where we have results 4, 5 and 6. 
if we use this move forward button we can see that now the pages available to us are two three four and five and we click on it again we now have access to three four five six and so on and so forth we can fetch some more random words just to increase the number of pages in our app and we see that the number of pages keeps going higher and higher we can now use this go to last page button which takes us to page 34 where we have the hundredth result and then we can use this go to first page button to take us back to the first page so that's how you do pagination in flutter if you need the code that we've just written get it from github the link is in the description